Hi, this is Mark Evanstein with music.py, and this is a Python music short. So in this Python music short, I want to do a little bit of counterpoint. So in music, counterpoint is basically the art of writing multiple parts that fit together. Often this involves paying attention to the musical interval between the two parts and checking whether or not it's consonant or dissonant. For this sort of toy example, I'm going to stick with just two parts, and I'm also going to stick to first species counterpoint, which basically means that each part moves one note against one note. It's never the case that one part moves faster than the other part. If you take a counterpoint class in college, you start with first species counterpoint. That's why it's called first species. Anyway, so taking a look at the script, of course I import the scamp libraries, I create a session, I create a new part with a, a choir aw sound called voice. And then the first thing I do is create a function to test whether two notes are consonant with one another. The way that I do that is I subtract the MIDI values of the two notes and take the absolute value because it doesn't really matter which note is on top. And then the next thing I do is I take that number modulo 12. And so what that does is if you have an interval like 16, which is an octave and a major third, it turns it into four, which is just the major third. Because traditionally in counterpoint, we don't care too much about extra octaves. Then what I do is I just test whether that interval is one of a set of consonant intervals. So in this example, I'm treating unisons, minor thirds, major thirds, perfect fourths, perfect fifths, minor sixths, and major sixths as consonant. Everything else is dissonant. So the whole idea of counterpoint is that you have some line that already exists and you're trying to write a second part that fits with that existing line. The cantus firmus is the existing line. Cantus firmus translates to fixed song. So I've created this list of pitches and then I've started a counterpoint and I've given it the first note because we need to know where the other part starts from. The way the script is gonna go is that we're gonna just keep adding a new note to the counterpoint each time looking for the motion that we can do that creates a consonance with the cantus firmus. So here's the body of the script. I is kind of the index of which note we're on in the cantus firmus. And so while I is less than the cantus firmus, we're gonna keep looping. The first thing that we're always gonna do is we're gonna play the current chord. So the current note of the cantus firmus and the current note of the counterpoint. Then we have a little check here. If I plus one is greater than or equal to the length of the cantus firmus, basically what we're checking here is are we on the last note? If so, we don't need to come up with another note for the counterpoint. Okay, so if we get down here, we're somewhere in the middle of the melody and we need to figure out what the next note for the counterpoint is gonna be. So the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna look through a list of different motion options, right? So this is going up a half step, going up a whole step, going down a half step, down a whole step, up a minor third, down a minor third, up a major third, down a major third. And we're gonna look through them in that order and see if any of them lead to a consonance, in which case that can be our next note. The one thing that you may notice is that I've prioritized here going up over going down. And in particular, I've made going up a half step and up a whole step um, prioritized over going down a half step or down a whole step. Now, often one of the things that's worth prioritizing in counterpoint is contrary motion, which means that if the canis firmus goes up, you go down, or if the canis firmus goes down, you go up. And so this list is a good kind of set of priorities for if the canis firmus is going down, because it's prioritizing going up. However, if the canis firmus is going up, and that's what this check is right here, if the next note of the canis firmus is bigger than the current note of the canis firmus, then we actually wanna reverse all of the motion options. So we're gonna prioritize going down instead of going up. Make sense? Maybe that was confusing. Anyway, here is the heart of the script. We basically check, is it consonant, right? So is the next note of the cantus firmus consonant with the current note of the counterpoint plus whatever motion that we're considering, right? So we're testing this as a possible next note for the counterpoint and seeing if it's consonant with the cantus firmus's next note. If it is, then we append it to the counterpoint and we break out of the loop. If it's not, then we're just gonna move on to the next motion option and move on to the next motion option until we find a motion that we can take with the counterpoint that leads to a consonance with the cantus firmus. Just in case, I've made it so that if none of these motions work, it raises an error saying that it could not find an acceptable motion. This really shouldn't happen in this example there's enough consonant intervals that one of these motions is gonna to lead to a consonant interval. But theoretically, if you were to change the definition of consonants so that fewer kinds of intervals are consonant, maybe it could happen. Okay, so let's take one more listen to the counterpoint. And 
And it's actually going to generate notation as well that looks like this. Now, if you've taken counterpoint before, this probably looks pretty decent. The only thing that you might quibble with is this perfect fourth at the end. Often in two voice counterpoint, we try to avoid perfect fourths. We treat them as dissonant. But, you know, I hard coded that as a consonance. If I don't want perfect fourths, I can just remove this five from the list and try running it again. And you could hear it was different this time. This time, the very final chord is a minor sixth. So there you have it, two voice for a species counterpoint. Now this is of course a, a fairly toy example. It's really hard to encode the rules of counterpoint actually, because not only are there a bunch of explicit rules, there are a bunch of implicit preferences for what different voices can do. But hopefully this gives you kind of a sense of how to go about this sort of problem. As always, if you want to try it for yourself, I put links to the code in the description. And if you're looking for a fun and interesting way of learning to code in Python and making music while doing it, check out my course on cadenze.com. Finally, if you haven't already, please like, subscribe, or spend some quality time with your pet.